I know that we've been taking a long time, but you guys are learning a lot <clears throat> about how to manipulate uh, splines. My cat needs attention. Okay, the first thing we're going to add this time around uh, is the uh, turbo shaft elevator in the back of the bridge. Uh, first, we're going to get rid of the camera and light layers. We are left just where we are modeling. Z to make this transparent. A to deselect that lip that we added under the bridge stone. Uh, Shift S to make sure that your cursor is at center. And hit 7 so that we can hit the top. Now, uh, just to get the, a lot of this stuff out of the way, I'm going to hit layer number 2 so that there's nothing showing. Uh, just our 3D cursor and our uh, plans from Alan Sinclair. So here is the what we're going to add, we're going to do this as a simple cylinder. So sh uh, shift S, or I'm sorry, shift A, mesh, and uh, cylinder. Of course, you can also do add mesh cylinder. I'm going to scale this down till it's near the right size. And then I'm going to grab, <coughs> pardon me, X, move it over the, wow, my lucky guess, Eric. Move it over where the turbo shaft elevator should be. Go to 1. It won't be in the right position, so we're going to grab Z and move it up here. And actually, I'm going to move it just so that there's actually a rounded edge here. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab Z and move this just to the bottom where that starts to change. Now, I'm going to also hit Tab. Oh, heck. This is a uh, far... Far too dense of a mesh, so I'm going to, for all that luck, I'm going to delete this, X, Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder, we're going to go over here, I don't need 80, uh, we could cut that down, we could probably make it 40, but I'm going to make it 60, just so it renders a little faster, Scale, bring that sucker down, Grab X, move it out here. Little, little too small this time. Scale uh, looks about right. One. Grab Z. Grab Z. Bring that right up to that lip. All right, tab A to deselect everything. B just to select the bottom. Grab Z. I'm going to bring it up to just under where the BC deck should be. A to deselect everything. <clears throat> and this is a little new. We're going to B, grab the top. That's not the new part. Neither is this. We're going to hit E, Z, so that we scale this up. And then we're going to uh, make sure that this is in bounding box. Scale and make this smaller so that we have a, an edge here. Now it's not rounded, so we're going to hit A. Then we're going to hit Control R and left mouse click once and then right mouse click. So we've got this row of verts that we have added. We have subdivided all these edges. And we're going to scale and very slightly pull that out. Okay. So now this is a little more rounded. A to deselect. Z and tab. So, of course, we're going to smooth shade it. <clears throat> and then over here under add modifier, we are going to edge split and apply. And we've got a nice turbo elevator. Let's go to textures. Now the turbo elevator, I do believe, is usually shown slightly darker than the rest of the hull. Here is a screen capture I took of the episode, the Corbo Might Maneuver, and you can actually see the, B, uh, the turbo elevator shaft sitting atop the BC deck and behind the bridge, and it is certainly darker, a darker gray than the rest of the hull. As a matter of fact, the linear and the accelerator and the uh, impulse engines are pretty much the same gray. 
So we're going to go and grab the hull gray. And then we're going to hit plus. Oh, no, I'm going to hit minus. I'm going to hit plus down here where it says hull gray. I apologize. It makes it hull gray one. So we're going to get back off the dot one. And I'm going to put dark just to make it a little different. So this is dark hull gray. It leaves the color. It makes it different than the rest of the hull. Uh, and we'll click this and we'll just make it a little darker here. And we're going to click in this viewport, grab that selector, select the color, make it look a little darker while we are working. And then we're going to hit M, move it to the first layer, go to layer one, and there it is. It is we have our turbo elevator shaft in back of the bridge. It is slightly darker than the bridge. Cool. All right, so now <clears throat> the linear accelerator and the uh, impulse engines are a little tougher. We're going to instead go to layer number two, so we've got a clean layer, and we're going to make this lower sensor complex down here. So you can actually see it here as well. We've got a nice cutaway, and we can see the edges. What you can't see is that that's actually two separate components. Hang on. Okay, since we're going to make the lower sensor dome or the planetary sensor dome at the bottom of the saucer, figured I'd show you a couple of quick references. First, another uh, William, um, actually, I'm sorry, Chris Trice uh, from the William McClellan uh, website, which is, of course, now defunct. Um, <clears throat> you can see that this lower sensor platform here and then there is this uh, diffused glass sensor dome, which is held on by a couple of screws. And there are three more of those hot dog-like things, like at the end of the triangle, only these are straight, so it's kind of like round uh, that's tacked on. I'll show you something a little closer. Here we go. Here's those uh, like uh, round ends <coughs> or rounded end. Uh, and you can see the two where these screw in. These are not actually equidistant, but we're going to treat them as equidistant when we uh, make our lower saucer. So here's the platform all around the edge, and then this <coughs> diffused glass here. Now, this is technically incorrect for the version that I'm going for. This was actually uh, put in place for the first restoration of the model when uh, the 11-foot Enterprise was taken to <coughs> the uh, National Air and Space Museum. You can uh, see that uh, this has a long, uh, long edge. It curves in, curves back out a little bit, <coughs> and then has a small, a small lip. And then this is like a dish or a bowl kind of turned over with, with an edge around the bowl. But this is uh, similar to the first pilot uh, sensor dish, except that actually the very first one was clear, and they had to they had to uh, either sandblast it or or coat it with something, uh, and it it got this uh, diffusion, but it 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 has no uh, center. Uh, they call it the nipple. There's actually a small rounded protrusion right in the middle for all the production, and believe it or not, it was actually. Uh, a f they actually put a phaser in it at one point. Gene Roddenberry asked for a phaser to be put on it. Now, of course, <clears throat> again, this goes to details too small to be seen on the screen. And you can barely make it out here in this picture. And this picture is, of course, certainly higher resolution than well, anything that was ever broadcast or even put on DVD. So it's no wonder that people never saw this detail. Uh, there, Here at least is uh, they put the uh, uh, nipple back on uh, when they made <coughs> another replacement diffused sensor dome. But here's the actual proof from old pictures uh, of 
the 11 foot model. You can actually quite clearly see here's that phaser nipple on the bottom and then sticking out of it is what's supposed to be a phaser. Kind of like the phasers, uh, the type 2 phasers that they uh, held in their hands uh, with the exception of this little extra dingus here on the end. <coughs> so that phaser nipple kind of looks a little bit like this tip of the uh, type 2 phaser. Uh, this is not a hero model, <clears throat> but this is one that appeared on screen and it had the details were painted on and some of the details are missing. Um, and uh, you can tell uh, the hero ones looked nicer than this and, and lit up and so on. But this is essentially the same as what's on the bottom of the nipple of the uh, sensor dome. To show you a little more uh, how closely this resembled uh, a phaser, um, let's see, let's run through this. Here we go. <clears throat> this is, I don't think this is actually one of the hero props, uh, but you can, you can see the front emitter here. Same here, you can see it from the side, I think it's the same model. Now, here's what the Hero Phaser looked like. It was a lot cleaner. These were made by Wa Chang. <clears throat> you can see the, uh, this is an ex exceptional image. It's taken off the DVD, so it doesn't have any broadcast uh, noise or static on it. Uh, you can see uh, the Hero prop actually had this uh, colorless, clear, uh, circular uh, uh, section here, which if you <clears throat> took this, hand uh, phaser type 1 power pack off the type 2 uh, body, which is supposed to make it more powerful, extend its range, and so on. <coughs> and you spin this dial, this would actually activate the targeting mechanism. In other words, this was hinged here at the front, and the silver piece kind of rose up, and this uh, circular, well, roundish piece here, this translucent roundish piece, would also roll up, it would roll back, and that's what would kick up this forward plate. Um, it has this uh, power cell here and a light here that they could match the animation to. Uh, and in this uh, shot from Court Martial, <coughs> the, uh, the guy's uh, Finney's uh, hand, his uh, finger's not even on the trigger uh, up here. And of course, the handle was also a power pack, it was a battery. But this was a hero model, and you could see that it actually had extra parts in it. This, like this release, this uh, turnable knob with numbers set on it, uh, this inserted uh, uh, silver. Uh, uh, it wasn't tape, but it it had a sticky edge to it, so <clears throat> uh, that uh, was put on for extra detail. So this is the hero model. Um, this is also, whenever they had a close-up, they used the hero model. I think this is a shot from, uh, <coughs> pardon me, I think this is a shot from the Omega Glory. Uh, blown up, of course, so that it's uh, a little out of focus. Now, this is not a hero model. This is a reproduction, but it does show exactly what I was talking about. This rounded section rolls up when you spin this, and this thing is supposed to be the the targeter here. And this was, of course, just some uh, uh, reflective tape, uh, like almost like a, like a holographic tape. Uh, it was uh, you know, very segmented and, and looked interesting. But they never had anything that looked quite this nice because you never got that close uh, of a shot. Here's another angle on another one of these fantastic prop replicas. This one goes so far as to include this removable section of the, uh, uh, of the lower body here. <clears throat> there was <coughs> almost always an indicator here, a little light actually in the original series. It was actually just a sequin uh, that was glued on. Uh, but that uh, everybody always thinks that that's the uh, trigger. It's not. The trigger was actually a button on the bottom of the uh, phaser type 1. But even the phaser type 1, has some kind of a, a nozzle emitter in front. Uh, here again looks to be 
the Hero model with some Velcro uh, strip on the side so it would stick to uh, uh, a, an actor's uh, other Velcro belt uh, or, or pieces of Velcro that were stitched to the pants. Uh, this looks to be a Hero model or a replica of it. You can see the nozzle in front is actually lit. This person is firing it. Here is the Type 1, which is right here. It's, it's used as a, a phaser power pack. And you can see that uh, <clears throat> uh, semi-transparent uh, section has rolled back and the targeter is up. Uh, the targeting site is raised, as it says here. And this shot is from a private little war when Luna has the phaser and she's trying to show it to uh, the enemies of her husband, uh, take me to Apella, your leader. Uh, this small box will make him uh, powerful beyond belief. And uh, again, a, a shot purportedly from the series of the Type One Phaser. Uh, I suppose uh, now these are these are replicas. The one on the left is a toy. The one on the right, I believe, is the Phaser Remote. Uh, this uh, is a replica of a Hero model. That's very nice. This is a replica of a Hero. Type 1 phaser model. And of course, this is definitely the phaser remote control. Absolutely exquisite in detail and uh, really fairly accurate. It's got the, uh, it's got the section in back uh, with the uh, what looks like airlons or fins for cooling. It's got the power cell. It's got the trigger. And it's got this translucent uh, phaser nipple up front uh, and a Type 1 phaser uh, as the power pack and, and an additional power pack down here. Absolutely marvelous. Anyway, we are going to at least reproduce this platform and then the translucent dome with its supports. You can barely see some of the supports here. There's a line here, a line here, a line here. Uh, I'll show you a better shot of those when we get close to making it uh, from the first pilot. And then I'll show you how we can add this uh, phaser nipple, if you wish. At the very least, the nipple, if not the uh, phaser turret itself. Okay, so we uh, go back to Blender. And I want a side view. And we're going to do a simple version of our... Uh, earlier spin, uh, we'll still use a uh, we'll still use a spline, at least. <coughs> pardon me, to make this curve here uh, on the inside. Remember, this is actually just a piece of round that's added. There are three of them: one, two, and then one on the other side. And uh, we are going to make this. This support comes down to here, and then this down here, and this, and and the nipple as well are one piece, which are going to be like a frosted glass. So uh, we are going to shift, uh, whoops, shift S, make sure my cursor is in the center of our model. Shift A, we're going to add not a mesh, but a Bezier curve. Three, rotate, 90, enter, one, okay. Grab that Bezier curve, move it down. We're going to put it right here, and we're going to scale. All right, move it down. Going to zoom in here. All right, and we're going to hit Tab so that we can start changing, uh, lining this up where we want it. So I'm going to grab this end, put it here where the curve starts, grab this handle, literally with G, right mouse click it and grab G. And I've got it pointed up and down. I realize that that's too much. We're going to grab this handle here, grab, bring it, oops, grab this handle, G, bring it up and left click. I'm going to grab this handle, grab, and bring it up, shorten it up here a little. I still want to make this uh, pretty straight. Roll in and grab that. There we go. That's pretty straight. And we're going to grab this. Grab G. And I want to try and make it match. So we're going to 
grab this last uh, where it's going to be a vertex. We're going to put that right here. Grab this handle. Whoops. Uh-oh. Oh, I don't know how to undo that. Oh. <laughs> oh, well. All right, so I'm going to delete that Bezier curve. Quick to add another. Shift A, curve, Bezier. Three, rotate, 90. One, grab. Scale. I'm going to tab. Grab this. I'm going to just grab this. Whoops. Uh. Wow. <laughs> I've done it twice now. How about that? Uh. Delete. Okay. <sighs> Third time's the charm. Add a Bezier curve. Three. Rotate. 90. I'm sorry about this, folks. One. Scale. Grab. Okay, so at least learn from my lesson. I'm going to rotate this. What the heck? Make it a little easier on myself. Uh, tab. When you grab one of these... Hit G. For Pete's sakes, do not hit H. Oy. Okay, I'm going to grab this handle. G, grab, spin it around. Make it straight up and down, at least there. I'm going to grab this uh, vertex or end of the curve here. Place it kind of in the center. Grab this handle. G, not H. Oh, holy mackerel. Okay, so now I'm going to grab this handle and shorten it up. Okay, so that's not so bad. It kind of matches the outline. I'm going to grab this last vertex, E to extrude, and I'm going to move my new handle over here. Grab this end of the handle, G, not H. Holy mackerel. Uh, and grab this handle from my original and bring it all the way back here. All right, now grab... I'm going to move this here, grab this handle, and kind of grab here. I want to make this flattish. Grab. Okay, so we've got a fairly nice curve, although I'd probably rather make that with an, <coughs> pardon me, with an actual curve. Let's see if I can grab. Yeah, that's not so bad. Okay, so I'm going to tab out and take a look at this. This curve's not great, but it's not too bad. Tell you what. Okay, so we're going to uh, object convert to uh, mesh from curve. And you know what? I, I just don't like it. Alright, so X, delete. I'm going to do it the hard way. Shift A, we're going to add a mesh. We're going to pick circle. It's only got 16. Let's make this a 32 again. 3, rotate 90, 1, scale. And we're going to do a little trick here. Let's grab this, move it down here. We're going to scale this until it kind of matches this curve. Okay, not too shabby, make it a little larger, scale. Alrighty, that's not so bad. Now what we're gonna do is going to shift D to duplicate it, move this over here, and then shift D to duplicate it again, 
grab it and move this here. All right. So now we've got three circles. We don't need all of the uh, circle circular parts. As a matter of fact, I'm going to grab the center one. I'm going to scale this one up just a little bit. Grab it and move it here. So we'll scale that up some more. Grab. Oops, grab. Make it kind of equidistant here. And I'm going to scale that Z. Flatten that just a little bit. Grab Z. And intersect. Grab X. Intersect both of my other circles. Okay, so I've got three circles. It looks kind of like Mickey Mouse, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to take this first circle, select it, hit Tab. <coughs> I'm going to hit A to deselect everything. I want to keep this vertice all the way over to this vertice. So A to deselect everything. C so that I select only the verts that I want. Left mouse click and pick everything except from here to here. So I'm going to hit uh, X to delete those verts. That's actually working very nicely and is very smooth and round. Okay, tab. We're going to pick this second circle here. Tab. And I want to keep, say, this vert here all the way to maybe, I don't know, maybe this vert here. So A, we're going to deselect that. C, we're going to delete. We're going to highlight all of these verts first. I don't need this one. And we are going to hit X, vertices, tab. Okay, so that's not bad. The curves are in uh, about the proper place. They're nicely curved instead of my terrible uh, Boolean. Now I'm going to grab this last sphere. Oh, it's not a sphere, it's a circle. Tab, A, deselect everything. Now, I don't need this vert. And then I don't need anything after this center one here. So... A to deselect C. We're going to get rid of everything else. Delete, 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 and delete that one. Okay, cool. X, vertices, tab. Okay, so we've got three curves that are actually pretty close to where we want them. Uh, and I'm going to, I've got one of them highlighted. We're going to shift, select, shift, select. So shift, right mouse click, shift, right mouse click. And we're going to control J. Now they are one object. So we're going to go in and we're going to hit tab. <clears throat> Let's hit this vert and this vert vertex. And we're going to hit F for face and join them. Then we're going to hit these two and face and join them. We're going to pick this vert. We're going to hit E, Z. So E to extrude, Z to go up. I'm going to go into... <coughs> the uh, saucer section A or just click on this vert here. So we're going to do E and X and extend that out to this center spot here. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to leave that selected for a moment because I want to place our uh, I want to place our 3D cursor on there. First, I want to get really close. This is not exactly centered. So I'm going to grab X and move it. After zooming in, move it right on that blue line there. Okay, good. That's about as centered as it's going to get without being mechanically perfect. Now, while that vertex is still highlighted, Shift S, cursor to selected. So there's our 3D cursor. A to deselect. A to reselect absolutely everything. Now I'm going to hit Control-7. <coughs> so we are looking at it from the bottom. <coughs> and we have all our vertices selected. I'm going to go over here to Spin. And 80 and 360 degrees. You know what? That's actually pretty good. You'll notice we've got the same problem we had with our original spline for the saucer. So I'm going to hit A to deselect everything, A to select everything, tab. I'm going to rotate this 180 degree. Oh, nope, I am not. First, I'm going to tab back in. I've got everything selected. 
uh, oh, tab out, shift, control, alt, C, origin to geometry. That should put the origin right in the center. There we go. So now I can rotate, rotate this 180 degrees. R, 180, enter. And believe it or not, that line uh, where we started is actually over here now uh, towards the back where it will hardly ever be seen. And we're going to hit smooth. And then just for the heck of it, you know my favorite, we're going to add modifier edge split and apply. And then we're going to uh, tab, make sure everything is selected. I'm going to go to mesh, normals, come on, recalculate the outside. And hopefully, well, it just reversed everything. Ha! Okay, so we're going to uh, tab. Uh, hmm, how are we going to do that? Mesh, normals, recalculate inside. <laughs> no matter what I do, oh, recalculate outside. That's just not working. So tab. Ha. All right. It looks like this uh, center circle here because I used it doesn't often happen to me um, because I use the inside of the circle to make that part it actually is remembering that and it's making it different than the other two how about that alright so what I want to do is I want to select <coughs> only these uh, Interior ones. All right. Well, I'm going to do A to deselect them. And I'm going to look and see where the color changes. So that's actually fairly simple to see. I'm going to switch over to Edges. Highlight an edge. And then hit Alt and pick the next edge. Oh, dear. I had to Alt and Shift. So I'm going to do Alt, Shift, pick the next, and the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. Go all the way up through this blue area to where it ends here. What happens if I go to Face? Oh, darn. I lose it all. Okay, so we'll try that again. Pick an edge, Shift, Alt, pick the next, and the next. At least you get them all. And then go all the way down here. Okay, so I've got them all selected, but I don't have all the internal components here selected. So, C, and uh, this is going to be a this is going to be painful, but I don't see any way really to avoid it. So C, and just pick each of these lines, and you'll wind up selecting faces. I wonder, I wonder, tell you what, we're going to go to faces, oh, here, uh, let's deselect everything, faces, I'm going to select a face, shift, I'm sorry, alt, next face, oh, and then shift, alt, nice, that'll do it. And it's only selecting the ones that I want. Okay. That's nice. We're going to run through here. Shift, Alt, right mouse click on any one of the faces on the interior. And it's grabbing those. I think it realizes that they all belong to the same orientation. I've not had this happen before. This must be unique to this later version of software. <coughs> Shift-Alt, right mouse click. Continue picking this 
all the faces in the center channel. This is certainly easier than doing it by all the vertices. Hot dog, we are almost done. Almost there. Okay, cool. So now, all the faces uh, that we need to flip the normals have been selected. We're going to go to Mesh, Normals, and Flip. Okay, cool. Uh, A to deselect them, and ah, it all looks good now. Excellent. Excellent tab. And it's smooth, and we've got uh, sharp edges. Nice. Our base platform is complete. All right, so we're going to move that to one. Oh, let's go to one with that still selected. Let's go to our materials and textures, and we're going to pick hull gray. Okay, cool. Very nice. Very nice indeed. All right go to the second layer again so we can have an unimpeded view. Now we want to make this section. All right, and despite our, well, our, <laughs> despite my fiasco, shift S, cursor to center. I'm going to add another circle, shift A, mesh, circle, and uh, let's make this 60. All right, and then three, rotate 90. Whoops, three, whoops, three. Come on, Eric. Three. Three. Okay, good. Rotate. 90. Hot dog. One. And we're going to scale this down. Scale, scale, scale. Grab Z. And we want to match that outline. So we're going to grab Z. We're going to move this down until it's kind of equidistant from all points. Uh, grab Z. So move it down a little more. And then scale. Okay. Okay, might scale a little more. Grab Z and move it down. Okay, that looks like it matches pretty well. Uh, now, of course, just like all the rest of these that we have done, we're going to tab. Oh, <laughs> I'm in face mode. I want vertex mode, vertices. Okay, good. And I've got a center one here and a center one here. I certainly don't need all of these. A. I'm going to leave this, possibly leave this. All right, so we're going to pick C, make this a little larger. I'm going to leave that one. So I'm going to pick from here, go all the way up and around, and I'm just not going to pick the center one. Okay, actually, you know what? I am going to pick the center one. Shift, click. Okay, this, for whatever reason, lines up really nicely here. X vertices. Good, we are left with this. All right, I actually want two more uh, circles. So we're going to tab out A, Shift A, Mesh, Circle. We're going to change this down, make it half, 30. Okay, so 3, rotate 90, 1, S to scale it down. There's our circle. Grab. We're going to require two of these. So I'm going to place this here. Scale. Rip. Okay, great. Now, before we do anything else, Shift D. Grab it and move it over here. Hmm, I think we need to scale that up just a little bit. Scale, scale, scale. That looks good. This one actually needs to, well, actually, hang on. Grab. And it looks like this one needs to be scaled up as well. So scale root, until it kind of matches that profile. Grab and not too shabby. Okay, 
We're going to zoom in on this. And we're only going to use the external curves this time. <laughs> Tab, A to deselect. I'm going to keep this here, vert, up through this vert. I don't need, well, I'll tell you what, I guess we'll keep up to here. So A to deselect. C, and let's grab all these other verts down to here. X vertices, tab, we're done with that for now. <coughs> now this one, very similarly, tab, A to deselect. Obviously, I don't need these. Uh, I do need this and this to meet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this one. We're going to select from here on, so C. And we're not going to select the centermost vertex. X vertices. All right, cool. Tab. And now we've got our three uh, segments here. So I'm going to shift, click, shift, click. The shift right mouse click, Con uh, control J to join them. They are now one piece. We can do some editing. Tab. I want to keep this section of the curve, <coughs> but I want it to meet here. So I'm going to grab this vertex, G, not H. Move this here. We're going to get a little creative. We're going to zoom in. It looks like this line fairly well continues. We're going to do E to extrude. And then we're going to, with this highlighted, shift, right mouse click, F for face. Let's grab that vertex <coughs> and move it <laughs> here. If we want to make that transition a little smoother, we can always shift, right mouse click, subdivide. Where are you? Subdivide. There we go. Grab the center vertex. Grab, move it up just a fraction. And then that's actually pretty good. Okay, cool. So we're going to leave that. And I come down here. And we just want them to intersect here. So there's actually a couple of different ways you can do that. First way I'm going to first way I'm going to show you is to select these two. We're going to subdivide. This way I can leave this vertex here and this vertex here. Now I want to slide this vert down to here to where it intersects. So shift V and you get this little little arm and you see your vertex move. So I'm going to place it right where I want my vertex to wind up, which is right there. Left mouse click. My vertex has been moved. I don't need this vertex up here anymore. Highlight it. X vertex. And then, eh, what the heck, we'll do the same here. Highlight this vertex and this vertex. So now we've got this one edge selected. We're going to subdivide. We're going to pick that center vertex. That way this line never moves. We're going to do shift V like Victor and move that dot till it meets up with the other vertex and left click. Okay, great. We don't need this vertex anymore. Highlight it, X vertex. All right, so now we've actually got two vertices right here, one on top of the other. We're going to hit B. So, oh, we only selected one. So Z, B. That selects both of them. I was not in transparent mode. <coughs> okay, Alt, M at center. And now that is one vertex. Okay, great. So we are going to... A, A, select them all, control seven. So we are looking at it from the bottom up. We're gonna do our spin. As a matter of fact, the spin settings that we last used will probably all be good. Spin. So we've got 80, it went 360 degrees. A to deselect, We're going to tab out into object mode. Shift, Control, Alt, C. I'm going to do origin to geometry. So now the origin is right in the middle of this, uh, of this geometry here, which actually is looking pretty good. So I'm going to hit Z. And what we need to do is we need, of course, to smooth that out. And just like everything else, I'm going to go over here to modifier and add 
and edge split. Now, unfortunately, I want to flip the normals. I don't know why that did that. That's really odd. So one, tab, A to select everything, mesh, normals, recalculate outside. There we go. Tab. Okay, cool. So we are going to move this. So we've, we've built the whole frosted glass section. We're going to uh, move to the first layer. Go to the first layer. And as a matter of fact, let's highlight that and go to, oh, uh, let's apply our edge split. Go to our texture and materials section. We're going to pick the dome sensor just like up there. And now we've almost got a completed section. This is looking pretty nice. Oh, we've still got a little repair to do, so control seven. Make sure that uh, this is the only thing selected. Tab. Everything is already here. We're going to remove doubles, and we should have uh, a few, 109. All righty. We've already recalculated to the outside, but we're going to do so again. All right, so mesh, normals, recalculate. Okay. That's pretty good. That looks nice. And... We've still got the original uh, line is here in front. So we're going to rotate 180. So now that line is in back. We're almost done. We're going to add the three rounds. And uh, then we'll call it quits on this section and this uh, part of the tutorial. Okay. So what we need is, let's go to 1, <clears throat> Z, a to deselect everything, and we are going to add a rather low poly UV sphere. So add or shift S, mesh, and UV sphere. But we don't need 60 and 31. <coughs> Let's, uh, the originals were, of course, 32 and 16. And that's actually going to be plenty for what we require. So we're going to scale this down. Grab it. Move it out here. Now, let's zoom in. <coughs> I've got the center of this particular sphere. Grab. And it's centered right on the edge of the sensor dome platform that we just made. So I'm going to scroll, uh, scale this down till it's about the width, or at least the radius, of this outside piece of round. All right, I'm going to grab this Z and make it match the bottom of this piece of round. Okay, great. Now, we actually only need about a quarter of this sphere. We certainly don't need the whole sphere. We could also do with just half if we really wanted to, but I'm going to hit Tab, A to deselect everything. I'm going to come in here. Now, I want to keep the center row of verts so I want to go just above it, B, select this entire upper half of verts, X, to delete them. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to go just to the left of this center set of verts, B, select all of this, X, verts, and I've got a pretty nice piece that looks like a, actually looks like a sconch. Anyway, one, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to highlight the top row of verts, so B, select them, E, Z, I have this feeling I'm missing something, but I'm not. Okay, good. And A, and Z. Okay, so one, and tab, and smooth. And what the heck, edge split and apply. And we're going to go to materials and we're going to grab our temporary hull gray. All right, great. Control 7. I'm going to grab this X and move it in just slightly. Okay, great. So now we can't see the edges. All right, so now I'm going to duplicate that, Shift 
D. So I should have two of these here. And we're going to go back to 3D cursor. And of course, just make sure Shift S, cursor to center. We're going to rotate one third of 360 degrees is 120. So we're going to rotate one, two, zero. Enter. Oh, I didn't have it duplicated. So Shift D, rotate one, two, zero. Shift D, rotate one, two, zero. Okay, great. Z, we now have our pieces of round in place, uh, e each of them uh, equally distant from each other, one third of the way around. Let's go to one and Z, and it matches with Alan Sinclair's plans. A, to deselect everything. All right, we've almost built all the physical structures for the upper saucer. We need the linear accelerator. We need the impulse engines. We need the lights uh, on, a <coughs> pardon me, the sides of the saucer and the strawberry-shaped Christmas tree light up on the bridge. And we are even going to put that infamous uh, circular uh, section at the top center of the saucer later on. But that will be the next uh, tutorial for some of that. And I will see you, see you then.